My name is Bethany Brookshire, and this is Eureka Lab. Everyone loves geysers. Diet Coke and Mentos always make a fun demonstration of chemistry in action. But can you do an experiment with one of these geysers? Yes, you can. All you need is a hypothesis or an idea to test. Then map out how to test it. I'll show you how. To figure out our hypothesis, it helps to understand how putting a Mentos candy into a soft drink triggers a geyser. The foaming fountain comes from a process called nucleation. In chemistry, nucleation is what happens when new structures form by self-assembly. In the case of soda pop and Mentos, the new structures are bubbles of carbon dioxide. A soft drink gets its fizz from the carbon dioxide dissolved in it. When you take off the cap and release some of the pressure, the carbon dioxide begins to nucleate, organizing itself into bubbles. Usually, this process isn't terribly explosive, unless you've shaken your drink up first. But if you add a rough surface into the mix, such as the tiny crevices on the surface of a piece of Mentos candy, the bubbles can form so fast, they need to explode out of the bottle. They've got nowhere to go but up. So we know why the geyser happens. A rough surface makes big bubbles. We can now develop a hypothesis. To test our hypothesis, we need to measure how high our geysers will go. I set off each geyser against a wall with different heights carefully marked. I videotape each one. Then I will be able to see the maximum height that each geyser ascends to. I will also weigh each beverage before and after the geyser spray. The bigger the geyser, the more soda will come out of the bottle. Those that lose the most weight likely also will have spewed the biggest geysers. For my experiment, I've decided to compare the nucleating ability of rough candy and smooth candy. M&Ms are very smooth, while Mentos are rough. Sugar cubes are the roughest of all, little cubes full of large nucleation sites. I'll put an equal mass of Mentos, M&Ms, and sugar cubes into separate bottles of soda. Make sure to repeat your experiment with each type of candy many times. Every soda will vary slightly, so you need many geysers to compare one variable to another. My results showed that my hypothesis was correct. Smooth candy shells are no good for getting geysers. Sugar cubes are better, but their nucleation sites may be too big for a really good fizz. But Mentos? Just right. The tiny pits and craters make a perfect geyser. So what were your results? Make sure to head over to Eureka Lab or click the link below to see my results and to share your own.